Prince Harry calls a truce, and an American TV host feels the wrath of royal watchers. These are my LA Diaries. Page Six has a write-up that has caught royal watchers' attention. In an article titled, Joy Bayer Slams Queen Elizabeth After King Charles's Cancer Diagnosis, The Poor Guy, the New York Post sibling site spotlights the 81-year-old View host's nasty reaction to King Charles's cancer diagnosis. Joy told her castmates and studio audience, I mean, Queen Elizabeth was in the position for 70 years, you know, and the longest reign. I think she could have used some term limits. She asked, why not step down and let Charles have his day in the sun? The poor guy, he finally gets to be king and now he has an illness. That doesn't seem fair. There's something wrong about it. While literally everyone is distraught over the king's diagnosis, I can't find anyone but Joy that has used the opportunity to criticize the late queen. On Princess Elizabeth's 21st birthday, she was with her parents and Princess Margaret on a tour of South Africa. In a speech broadcast from Cape Town, the young princess dedicated her life to the service of the Commonwealth by saying, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. So, no, Joy, there is nothing wrong about dedicating your life to a life of service. There is nothing wrong with making a promise and keeping it, little to none of our politicians are capable of such an admirable task. Joyless Joy has co-hosted The View on and off for about 25 years. She once told Time Magazine that her comments are never designed to provoke, saying, I just say what I say and then they're upset with me. But as Time Magazine points out, just saying what she says gives her attackers plenty of material. For instance, she once suggested that former Vice President Mike Pence might be mentally ill because he said Jesus spoke to him. She also accused Republicans of being against babies due to the formula shortage. Yet, no matter how uneducated or judgmental Joy's commentary can be, Time calls her she who cannot be canceled. One Hollywood insider told the publication, The View needs Joy more than she needs to do it because she's such an established brand. She has been a fixture on American daytime television almost as long as Regis Philbin or Oprah Winfrey. And while I don't watch The View because it's just one giant rage tweet, I do have a suggestion for Joy. Joy? Why don't you step down and let a newbie have their day in the sun? Why don't you take your own advice and move along, allowing someone else their time to shine? Probably a lot harder than it sounds, huh? Speaking of His Majesty's health crisis, page six is exclusively reporting that they have a source close to Prince Harry that says that the king's youngest son is determined to forge ahead with reconciliation plans after the king's cancer diagnosis. The source says that details of the Harry and King micro meeting will likely remain private, stating it looks like Harry may be learning his lesson. He really wants this reconciliation plan. That of course, would be in stark contrast to the play-by-play -play that tabloid media received about Harry's movements when visiting his father. I don't consider Harry's visit a pure PR move. He was incredibly traumatized by the death of his mother, and I don't think he would handle any additional loss well. However, I am curious to know what you think, so I want you to let me know in the comments below. Update, I just saw the video of Prince Harry giving an award at the NFL Honors Award Show, and I take back every nice thing I've said about him this week. I do think, though, that it says a lot about um, Prince Harry that he made the effort. That's an extremely long plane ride. Uh, so I'm, I'm grateful that he did make the effort to see his father. And I have seen some of the criticism that say it's just a, a strategy, it's just a PR move, but they've had years to go reconnect with Thomas Markle and they haven't. I do think that this, in this particular instance, it's sincere. 
I know a lot of people are complaining and, and criticizing the 30 minute mark, but perhaps this was the first and only time he could get out there and he wanted to do it sooner than later. And I think we should be a little bit kinder when it comes to him showing up to see his father. For all we know, he has regrets and he wants to express those. Mm. Perhaps he just misses his dad. And that is what, you know, royal watchers have been curious they're just they couldn't believe that he hadn't done those things mm. so far so let's let's assume the best in this case yes i think that's absolutely right to rush back home to do an event like that while your father has cancer it's not a great look oh my god it's so embarrassing with rumors of no reconciliation on the horizon for the battling brothers an old quote of prince williams is currently trending on tiktok According to Martin Ivins, the then editor of the Sunday Times, the journalist privately met with Prince William at a pub on October 11th, 2019. Prince William was distraught over word that an ITV documentary titled Harry and Meghan, an African Journey, was likely going to reference the friction building between the heir and the spare. He expressed this to Martin by saying, I've put my arms around my brother all of our lives, and I can't do that anymore. We're separate entities. I'm sad about that. All we can do and all I can do is try and support them and hope that the time comes when we're all singing from the same page. I want everyone to play on the team. That quote is resurfaced after Harry's whirlwind 24-hour trek with neither brother attempting to see each other. The TikTok video has generated over 50,000 likes and 5,000 comments. Do you think Harry and Meghan could ever be team players? Let me know in the comments below. All eyes will be on the Super Bowl this Sunday, not for the touchdowns and tight ends. Well, maybe one tight end. Everyone is asking poor Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs if he plans to propose to his girlfriend of like 13 football games, Taylor Swift. While it would be the ultimate romantic gesture and I mean, come on, that's good TV. It also feels like the grossest commercial opportunity humanly possible. During a press conference in Las Vegas ahead of Travis's game against the San Francisco 49ers, a Crafts reporter asked the Kelsey brother if the Super Bowl ring is the only one he had on his mind this weekend. They said, is there going to be another ring besides the Super Bowl ring if you win on Sunday? Travis keenly replied, I'm focused on getting this ring, and that's all my mind's focused on right now. I think he'll privately propose to the singer. One day with a friendship bracelet. I mean, that makes my heart fall into my butt. But until then, I'm having a blast living vicariously through this love story. Baby, just say touchdown. Did you like this video? Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Have your say in the comments, share, and follow Talk TV on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm Kinsey Schofield.